Thank you for joining this lesson. Remember to subscribe to this channel and to also share the link with friends. Number 13 is on uniform circular motion. Part A, we are told that uh, an object is released to fall vertically from height of 100 meters. At the same time, another object is projected vertically upwards with velocity of 40 meters per second. With velocity of 40 meters per second. So one is vertical projection and the other one is free fall. Before we continue with this lesson, remember you can join us for our, for our online programs through 0704-153-366. That is our line. You can reach out through WhatsApp or a phone call. Now, let's check what is being asked here. We have said there is a vertical projection here. So there is a vertical height of 100 meters. Then an object is being released to fall, while another one is thrown vertically upwards from the bottom. Then we are told in part one, calculate the time taken before the objects meet. The time taken before the objects meet. Remember, this is the height. An object is being released from the ground at an initial velocity of 40 meters per second. Then another one is being released downwards. Another one is being released downwards. Therefore, we should know that uh, for the one being projected upwards, for the one being projected upwards, the motion is against gravity. Therefore, we usually say that uh, the height covered by the one being projected upwards, we can call it H2, this is going to be given by UT minus, because it is motion against gravity, half GT squared, minus half GT squared. But now there is another height, H2, which is going to be covered downwards by the free fall. And this one is given by half GT squared half gt squared just because in case we include ut the initial velocity during free fall is usually zero therefore this part becomes zero in the first equation so that's why we can even say that this h2 is ut plus half gt squared yeah exactly this is now the argument we resolve that the second height which is during the free fall now is equal to half gt squared because the initial velocity during free fall is zero so this part becomes zero but during the upward projection whereby there is ut minus half gt squared now we're going to have because there is an initial velocity this part is not becoming zero so the height during vertical projection becomes this therefore we want the time we want uh, the time whereby the two are going to be equal. Hmm? When are they going to be equal? Therefore, we say, we say that uh, this height now, when we substitute H2, will become half times G times unknown T squared. This will be 5T squared. 5T squared. But for this one, we're going to have... This is now for the first h. We're going to have an initial velocity of 40 times t minus half g t squared. So this becomes 40t minus 5t squared because this becomes 5, 5t squared. So we want to agree that because at a certain time when they will be meeting at the time they'll be meeting let's say they are meeting at a point x here if that is the meeting point when we take the height due to the free fall and the height due to the vertical projection we should be able to get 100 because we said it's from a height of 100 meters whereby a body is being released a body is being released from 100 and another one from the bottom, 
they meet somewhere. So where they are meeting, the two heights should give us 100 because there is the height covered due to vertical projection, another one due to the free fall. And now that the total up to the bottom is 100, then the two can be added to give us 100. Therefore, we can say 100 meters equals to 5t squared plus 40t minus 5t squared. So this one cancels with this and 40t becomes 100. So that t equals to when we take 100 over 40. Now this gives us 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. That is the time taken before the objects meet. The time taken before the objects meet. The next is at what height do the objects meet? At what height do the objects meet? So they are going to meet at a height, at a particular height, and we can consider the, the body which is being projected upwards. That will give us height. So the height they are meeting is uh, this H2, which is equal to 40T minus, they are going to meet at H1, which is from the bottom, and it's given by 40 T, which has already been calculated, minus 5 T squared. So the height at which they meet will be, when I substitute now, I'm going to get, going to get 68.75. Eight point seven five meters from the ground. What if we consider the object which is falling free fall? Alternatively, alternatively, we can just agree. We can just agree that the object which is going down is going to cover a distance of five t squared. So, a distance of five. T squared that will be 5 into 2.5 then we square that 31 point meters but this is from the top therefore the height at which they are meeting is when we take the total distance of this and we subtract because this one has covered this from the top so from the bottom that is the meaning of height we're going to have our 68.75 meters so that is where they are going to meet then finally we got a question here from a uh, uniform circular motion we're being told that uh, a string of negligible mass as a bucket tied at the end the string is 60 centimeters long and the bucket has a mass of 45 grams the bucket is swung horizontally making six revolutions per second calculate part one the angular velocity. Late part one, the angular velocity. So what we are supposed to know is that uh, the interpretation of six revolutions per second is what we call frequency F. So frequency F is six. At the number of revol uh, revolutions per second, the number of complete revolutions per second is called frequency of the given object now we can say that a uh, angular velocity which is otherwise called omega can be given by 2 pi f so this means when we take 2 and pi then multiplied by f we should get our omega 2 by 22 multiplied by 6 out of uh, 7 this will be 30 7.71 and the units for omega or other angular velocity is radians per second radians per second radians per second the next question is calculate the angular acceleration we should know that angular acceleration is usually given by v squared out of r v squared out of r and there is also an alternative because v squared over r is one formula 
then there is a relationship between omega and v because we say that v equals to omega r then we can substitute instead of v we have omega r so acceleration which is centripetal this is a angular acceleration anyway or centripetal acceleration is going to be given by v squared so omega r squared out of r so in the process r squared cancels with 1r but omega remains squared so angular acceleration is going to be provided by omega squared times r omega squared times r because 1r simplifies with the existing r here so now with this formula omega has already been calculated so we need to take omega squared multiplied by r the value of r is going to be 60 centimeters long we make it as a unit so 0.6 squared times 0 0.6 this is going to be 853.42 and because it is a angular acceleration we're going to have it as meters per second squared meters per second squared finally we want to calculate the tension on the string now, tension on the string is usually given by mass times V squared out of R. But remember, the equivalence of this is the centripetal acceleration, or rather the angular acceleration already calculated. Therefore, we need mass times the acceleration, which has already been calculated. Therefore, we're going to have a mass of uh -huh. a bucket of mass 45 grams so 45 we will divide it by a thousand to make it as a unit times acceleration which is already here then we're going to get the tension in newtons because tension is a force so this multiplied by 45 out of a thousand this becomes 38.40 newtons 38.40 newtons and finally we have calculate the linear velocity so linear velocity because we said that uh, v equals to omega r v equals to omega r this is what we're going to apply omega is 37.71 multiplied by a radius of 0 0.6 that is 60 centimeters converted to SI units 37.71 multiplied by 0 0.6 this gives us 22.63 and because it is linear velocity now it will be meters per second